Crystals are one of the most important currencies in any season of Conquest KVK. And if you're a free to play player, it is essential that you maximize the amount of crystals you make because you won't be getting as many crystals as someone who spends money. Today, I'll be telling you every way to maximize the amount of crystals you earn to give you the best advantage you can get inside of your KVK. And it's probably definitely gonna help you trade better. If you want to maximize the amount of crystals that you do earn, this is definitely a video you must watch because it's going to be very easy and simple to follow the advice I give, but it's extremely valuable. So for anyone not in Season of Conquest, you probably don't know what crystals are. They're basically the way you access this special technology, which gets reset at the start of every new KVK. I won't be really going in depth on the issues on crystal tech and stuff like that. I'll just be telling you how to basically work around it while you can. So the first way to get crystals is really all involved in your crystal mine. This is probably the most important building you own because you can get up to like 12,000 crystals an hour easily with these crystal mines. And the best thing to do when you start a KVK, don't even bother leveling up your crystal research center. Max your mine first. That's what you have to do every time you start a new KVK. And if you don't, you're basically just hurting yourself. A max crystal mine is much better than like a level 15 or level 20 mine. If we just look at like a level one mine, your max workload is 8,000. At a level 25 mine, your max workload is 500,000. And each hour you get 8,000 crystals. So you can tell there's certainly a major difference right there. And you definitely want to be working on this building as much as you can because it's going to give you the most value, especially since it links in with bastions. And bastions are basically special quests you can do during KVK. So if we go up to the bastion that we have right now, the Belisarius Bastion. These bastions, when you level up their favor, so your favor with the bastions, allow you to get more crystal mine work speed. And the higher your crystal mine work speed, the better for you, basically. The higher it is, the more crystals you can earn per hour. Also, don't really just take any quest you get in the bastions. Try and take quests that give you over 100 favor and over 10,000 crystals. The best quests are defeating barbarians. Gaining power is actually really, really good. Training troops is really, really good. Scouting, if you're in a KVK with Fog, or the Courier Station one, if you're not. Courier Station, basically, you buy 20 stuff from the Courier Station. That's pretty self-explanatory. Also, killing barbarians is the best quest you could basically get. It's really, really easy to get this quest. I get it a bunch, and it's just kill five barbarians, basically. Really, really good, and I'll speak about killing barbarians a little bit later on, and there's special things you can do with those barbarians. Also, any quest like doing barbarian forts are really good, especially if you've got an active coalition like we do. They're doing forts basically 24-7. So you can join into a fort and just get a bunch of points there. And then there are some really, really good ones. For example, start two challenges in Lost Canyon. That gives you a Kahar's Bone Whistle and Crystals and Favor. The Crystals and Favor are lower, but the Kahar's Bone Whistle is really, really good. Really, you do want to try and get those Kahar Bone Whistle quests as much as you can. And if you have the resources to train troops, it's certainly a good idea to do those quests. Or what you do is you basically do not claim your troops until you get a quest such as train troops or gain power, which is what I try to do. I train up the troops, I wait till I do my bastion quests, and basically what I do is I just do those quests with the troops, basically. I just claim them, and then I finish the quest. Or maybe I have to train like two, 3,000 more. It's not much. You also get basically unlimited refreshes. You just have to be active while you're doing them. So the way this works is you refresh, you use a chance, you wait five minutes. I think it's five or 10 minutes to gain one chance, and you can refresh again. You can stack up to five chances, so you don't have to sit here watching and counting every single time. You can maybe do your five chances. If you get a quest that like defeat barbarians, you accept it, go offline, come back. All right, you get eb give ebony. You don't really want to give materials to the bastion unless maybe it's bones and you don't really want to give resources. So, you know, just skip it. Maybe go offline, go do something, come back. Got another refresh, whatever. Also, I forgot to mention, gathering resources are really, really good, especially if you're going to go offline. Try and get one of those bastion quests. They also give you a Kahar's Bone Whistle. Speaking of Kahar's Bone Whistle, these are basically special barbarians which give you really, really good rewards. What they give is 45,000 crystals, a speed up, usually a crystal key or a gold key, a chance at a gold head, I've only ever gotten one though, and a bunch of XP and stuff like that. What I would try to do with Kahar Bone Whistles is to try and AoE farm them. So if you don't know what that means, it means to use a commander which has an area of effect, example, Yisong, and try and farm them. So... These cars are a little bit far from each other, which is unfortunate, so I don't think I'll be able to chain them. But what you do is, what you usually would do is, you'd grab a commando who has like an E-Song or even the Cyrus, and you want to pull them up to this Kaha and try and attack both of them at once. They're not too tough. They're probably on par with a little 50 barbarian. So you should be fine when you're fighting them. Just note that if you can AoE them, it's really good since they cost, 
a lot of AP, I think it's like 200. Yeah, 200 usually. So that's extremely expensive. Unfortunately, I can't really AOE farm these ones. You can see I managed to aggro the other Kahar, which is actually really, really good. I just saved myself 200 action points and I got 90,000 crystals. That's really, really nice. Sometimes you can get very lucky and a barbarian might be next to a Kahar. What you can do is you can hit that barbarian and let that chain onto your Kahar and then do your Kahar chain. That's going to cost you like 80 action points. You can probably do 10, 15 Kahar whistles sometimes. It's all up to basically how good your tech is and which commanders you are using. Boudicca with Cyrus, Boudicca with YSG, really, really good for Kahar chaining, Barb chaining, all of that. So Kahar's really, really good. You don't actually have to claim the treasures, so don't stress about that. If you don't claim them, it will just go to your mailbox and you get the crystals either way. There is also a daily quest inside of the quest, like this Lucerne Scrolls. It's called the Crystal Quest to defeat one Kahar. This refreshes per day. So try and keep a Kahar whistle handy. I use both of mine, but try and keep one so that you can get those 10 points. Speaking of, the Crystal Quest is another way to get a lot of crystals. There are a bunch of challenges in here. It's basically like Lucerne Scrolls. There's nothing too difficult. The hardest is probably destroying a Barbarian Fort if you're in like a quiet KVK, or maybe even just increasing your power. Try to remember to do your Lost Canyon challenges. I sometimes forget and then I can't complete the quest and that's 50 points you lose. But like, even if you're not super active, it's quite easy to reach the end of this. And I bought the premium tier as well because that is really, really good value. So that's a quick side note. If you want to put, use some money, you want to use about $20. Premium tier is very, very nice. You get probably, it's like three and a half, four million crystals, something crazy like that. So I, I say try and get the premium tier if you want to spend money. But other than that, if you're not spending money, you still get a fair amount of crystals. I know it's way less than the premium tier, but you are still getting crystals out of this and you're trying to maximize as many crystals as you get. So just do these daily challenges and weekly challenges. You'll be fine. I, I personally didn't buy the advanced treasures last time and I still got a fair amount of crystals from this, so I couldn't really complain. Next up, the trial of Kalkarak is something fairly new to the KVKs. Basically, the way this works is you do a normal Kurak challenge, except it's a lot tougher. And you can earn yourself a, a crystal gain per hour. I've done the easy, easy version. It was the first one that came out. And I, I get 1,665 crystals an hour. Really, really good value, okay? It costs probably in total, I think it's about 3,000 action points. And you get crystals for the rest of the KVK. You also do get a bunch of crystals from just doing the Kurak as well. One thing to note is this can be very difficult. And there's ways to make it easier with technology, which I'll go over in a minute. But these crystal gains are important. So what you really want to do is try and do this trial as soon as you can. So that you can start earning the crystals earlier than everyone else in your KVK, which means you get more crystals, obviously. If you can do it basically the second it comes out, that's really, really good. Even if you do it like an hour later, it's fine. You're still going to earn those crystals pretty easily. Now, after about the on the first day of your KVK, you should unlock Kurak Trial Easy. And then just before your pass four, you unlock the normal difficulty, which is still just very hard, just saying. And then after that, about pass five time, you get yourself the third level, which is the hard difficulty. It's actually level seven pass. Wow. Okay. So it's level seven is when you get the hard. And then at the level eight pass, which is basically King's Land, you get yourself the nightmare difficulty. And then once you unlock the ziggurat, that's when legendary or hell difficulty becomes available. Now you do want to still try and do this as quick as you can, but they are going to be very difficult. So that's just, this is where your KVK technology comes in. So KVK technology, there are a lot of things to do with the Kurak, like the beating Kuraks. First, you have Kurak reports. This will give you more damage but mainly you've got Kurak's Gift. This allows you to gain more crystals from your Kurak-like events, and this is really, really good. Like, it's going to give you in total 50%, 35% more crystals. And to get Kuraku Gifts to about five, you only need to make yourself like two, 300,000 crystals to get Kuraka reports to five. And you also do want to try and get Skillful Operations up as much as you can. The first Skillful Operations, if you're free to play, is worth maxing. If you're not free to play, then you only get Skillful Operation 2 to about level six or level seven, Otherwise, you're spending more crystals than you're gaining. Now, the other things here is treaties, which allows you to get more crystals on the bastions, which I, which I spoke about earlier. And this is also a really, really good technology to try and get at least level four and level four on your first day. So I would get skillful operation to one as soon as you, five as soon as you can. Treaties to five as soon as you can. Cultural exchange, which gives you more favor to five as soon as you can. The more favor, the quicker you get the crystal mine speed. And then I would also try and get Kuraku's gift and plunder to five. Plunder allows you to get more crystals from barbarians, and barbarians are extremely important. So barbarians are another really, really major way to gain crystals. Plunder also increases your barbarian forts. So barbarians are probably the easiest way for a free-to-play free player to get crystals. What you do is you go and get yourself, let's say there's a group, see these three barbarians here. 
And the same thing I did with the Kahars, right? Area of effect, chain them. That's what you do here. If you're lucky like me and you have two marches which can AoE farm, I use Boudicca and Cyrus, Henry and YSG, you can AoE farm like easily six barbs within five minutes max. That's 80 action points or 160 if you're using two marches for over like six barbarians, maybe sometimes 10 if you're really lucky. And in total, that's going to give you like four to 10,000 crystals. It may not sound like a lot. That's a lot of crystals though. Like in some of the later zones, AOE farming is just so good. Like just looking into these later zones once they load in. Let's say, let's so, let's go to zone seven. So if you go in here, you can see the barbarians are already higher levels and you're going to get 500 crystals per barbarian. Yes, it may not sound like a lot, but when you can AOE farm these barbarians, it's absolutely insane how many crystals I've seen people make. Level 53 barbarians give you 600, and I'm pretty sure I can get level 56 barbs. They just haven't really spawned in yet. So AOE farming, super important, and it's something I definitely recommend everyone to do. If you don't have the time to AOE farm, or you're not really interested in doing it, or you literally can't because you don't have any good commanders, join Barbarian Forts. They give you the most crystals per action point besides AOE farming at 2,500 crystals, for about 200 AP or 300 AP per march. So yes, it's expensive, but it's going to give you the most value in comparison to like using just five march swarming barbarians, which isn't as good value. Now, when you're doing barbarians, like I mentioned before, the plunder technology is important, especially with plunder and Karaka's gift. I didn't, didn't, didn't really mention this. First of all, they've got second tiers, which you want to get about to seven and seven on each. Otherwise you're spending too many crystals. So seven on plunder two and seven on Karaka gifts two. And then your military technology, you can figure that out depending on your account. But these plunder and Karaku's gift are actually scaling technology, as I like to call them. The quicker you get your plunder up, the quicker you earn more crystals, the quicker you can level up your other things. The slower you get your plunder up, you earn less crystals, you earn less crystals overall, and then you take longer to get more tech, which means it takes longer to get more crystals, so it scales negatively for you. So if you can get these things to like 5 out of 5 on the first day, you're killing it. If you can't, obviously, I understand some people don't have enough crystals. Like, I spent a bit of money and I still don't have enough crystals to get these all to 5 out of 5. But the quicker you do get them to 5, the better because they scale, like I said. And technology that scales is important. Like, you could get your military technology to 5. I could get all this to 5 on the first day. But then my treaties are at, like, 1 and my plunders at 1 and my Kuraku's gifts at 1. So I'm negatively scaling. The only time you choose to really negatively scale your technology is when you're about to enter into like a major battle, maybe you're past four, and you're like, all right, I could get treaties two and a cultural exchange two to level six, or I could max out my improved bows and like attack formation to like five or six as well. That's when you can negatively scale because you are going to go into a major battle, and that's when I say it's somewhat reasonable to do that. Also to note, you can get crystals from your territory bonuses. Yes, it's not much, but these are crystals that you just get from basically sitting around and doing nothing. So they're not bad, and as your KVK goes on, you'll get more and more of these. Another way to get crystals is actually through the just events that pop around. So for example, Will of the Ancients, this is the first event that happens when you get into a KVK. You can get like 50, 60,000 crystals from this. I know it's not much, but getting that many crystals at the start of a KVK, especially as a free-to-play player, is giving you yet another advantage, and it's important to try and get through this. You actually get in total maybe, I think it's about 120, 150,000 crystals. I forgot that you get the 50k at the end. So yes, it's a really, really nice boost. Yes, it's not too much, but it's not bad. Now, another way to earn crystals, and I know I said this is mostly a free-to-play guide, but I will talk a little bit about spending Kachinga. In terms of spending money, there are a few things that come around. So obviously, you've got the Crystal Quest, the premium version. This is really, really good value. It's something I try to get usually every KVK. It depends if it's going to be a big KVK or not. And then there is the premium season crystal supply. This is basically an offer where you receive 60,000 crystals a day, and your crystal mine gets 50% extra work speed. Plus, you get a bunch of gems, which basically, basically, if you buy it first day, gives you one gold head, a bunch more crystals. And also, if you bought it, like, for what example, what I did, I bought it at the same time as a recharge offer, and I got a skill reset and a bunch of stuff, which was not too bad. So that was a good $8 Australian. So that was a pretty good option as well. And if you're going to be spending money for crystals, that's another great way. You've also got your just pop-up bundles. So for pop-up bundles, the higher your mine goes and the higher your crystal research center goes, you'll get, in, you'll get first come, first serve bundles. These are obviously lower value than the Crystal Quest and lower value than the month, the season supply, but they're still pretty good value. And if you're going to buy them, they're not too bad. Usually also before a major battle, a mountain warfare bundle will pop up. And that's also another way to spend money and get a good amount of crystals. Other than that, there aren't too many bundles off the top of my head that I can remember. But for the most part, having this like semi recharge event definitely brings you a lot more value, especially if you buy that premium season crystal supply much earlier compared to like other players. 
It's also having that season crystal supply earlier means you're going to earn more crystals. So it's just straight up better for you in the, in the long run. Now, if this video brought you some value in some way, or even if you just enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel as I try to bring you the most value-oriented content in Rise of Kingdoms. I also just want to say we're in a major KVK. It's us versus 1093, and that's going to be crazy. So 1307, 1093, our camp, and Earth camp. It's a mental KVK, and I'm going to be streaming as much of it as I can. If you are excited for that, please consider subscribing as I'm pushing 1,000 subscribers. We were almost there. We were 700 when I started this push, or maybe it was even 600, and we've made it up to 911. So we're doing great. I want to say I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.